Almost ready to go, huh? Yep. Is it about seven o'clock? Looks like a big bug over there. This is on the way to Red Lodge. We're about 10 miles out. And there's a fair amount of clouds out there in the mountains. You can see some snow out there. We're driving, of course. Actually driving pretty fast, around 70 miles an hour on a two-lane highway. There's no speed limit here, and that's about what the going rate right seems to be about right here. We've been driving uh, since uh, Teddy Roosevelt Park this morning at about 7.30. On the freeway, the speeds were running around 80, 85, and so it's a pretty good time. About 1.30 now, we figure it'll be in Yellowstone maybe in another hour or so. Don't know exactly what the weather might be, but I know there's some thunderstorms around, so I might have to bat down the hatches and put on some warmer clothes, actually. There's a tourist booth. Do you want us? I don't know that we need to, do you? If you want it, say yes now. Yes, yes. So here's Red Lodge. As you can see, it's like any other sort of resorty town. There's lots of little things along the sides to capture your dollars as you move through the area on the way to where you really want to go, which is those mountains back there in the distance where there are clouds right now. And we're going to be there in a little while. We'll be going through a pass of about 10,000 feet, another uh, 10, 20 miles or some such. Even bear, bear tooth pass. Uh, no, they just closed this part of the road, but Beartooth Pass is still ahead. There, see all that snow ahead there? You're going to be going somewhere closer to that, I think. Mm. Shouldn't have worn shorts. Well, you don't really know how bad it's going to be. Yeah, we're going over the top right through here. That's where we're going. Might take a shortcut. We have a time. So we're never going to get to those snowy valleys up over there. We're crisscrossing up over the top here. This is the pass.
collectors can go. It's actually better. This is sort of like their European pictures, isn't it? When they have conditions like this when they're driving around the Alps. pull out near the top, that would be great. You get a good view off that way. Seventy-five mile an hour <laughs> around these twenty-five mile an hour curves. Hardly, she's barely going twenty miles an hour around these curves. Would you like me to make things shift in the car? I could go that fast. <laughs> it could be you that shifts, though. Keep the button. Oh, that's interesting. She's in the 100 miles an hour now. 35. <laughs> There's all the snow fields back there. It's a pretty nice vista. And we, where we are, we are above. Um, we're above Red Lodge, and we're trying to go over the top here. There's a pass that we're coming to a little later called Beartooth Pass, and it's on the way to Yellowstone. And uh, this little valley, we've seen a number of cars with come by with, with skis and snowboards. In fact, we just passed two guys on the side of the road at one of the switchbacks, had their snowboards, they're leaning on them. They would apparently gotten up to the tops of mountain and snowboarded down some of these, um, <laughs> some of these crevices, and we're just trying to find a way to get back up, apparently. So, um, not for the faint of heart. I guess those are the Mountain Dew crowd. That's we're more uh, we're that staid Coke crowd or something or other. Coffee in the morning. Just something to get your blood going is all. So I think we must be getting pretty close to the top here. So you're going to recommend this road to your sister? She should drive. She should drive? Mm -hmm. The road is fine. That's true, the road has been great. It's just on the edge of the cliffs. That's all. Scenic turnout, 300 feet. Let's do it. Do I do it here? Wherever you look, feel safe.
nice little path to head along here. We're sort of at the top of the world here, probably around 10,000 feet, thereabouts. We just come up a uh, long road above Red Lodge, crossing over to the Beartooth Pass a little later. Pardon? It's falling down. Sort of slumping away. Yeah. Well, it's so nice here out of the wind, isn't it? Yeah. What did you say? It's about 60 degrees here, 65 in the sun out of the wind. You can smell the pines, yeah. yeah. That real fresh pine smell. Don't know exactly what's out here. I figured it would be a nice little walk out. Either way. No snow pack yet. So we just open this up. Nice, huh? Here you are, Jim, at the top of the hill and the end of the road. So now we're up on top in the back of that little visitor center that was right up above Red Lodge. There's still no name for this exactly. Uh, we're somewhere right around 10,000 feet and there's plenty of snow up here. You can kind of see where there isn't snow. It's kind of open and grassy. I guess it would be tundra mainly, but um, the uh, snow obviously, this probably hasn't been open for more than a week or two would be my guess, because uh, they would have had to have plowed this open. It's pretty early in the season for some of this stuff. And it's mid-June. And it's mid-June. Well, actually, it's getting in the second half of June. June 19th here. today. Yep. So, there's little plastic tubes along the side, which assume are some sort of plantings, trees or something that they want to protect. So we're just going to wind along the top here, I guess, and then we'll go down the other side a bit and then back through another pass. Over on the other side there, there's apparently the uh, Red Lodge International Summer Race Camp, so maybe that's where some of those snowboarders were really heading to. A 
lot of snow. It's definitely closed in the winter up here. This whole road 212 between Red Lodge and uh, Yellowstone is closed. We're still trying to make it over the top here. As you can see, it's it's pretty country. Frozen, partially frozen, I guess. We're uh, the poles along the side of the road are for uh, the uh, snow plows, of course. Uh, when they keep it open, I suppose the earlier part of the season, and maybe, maybe they come into play during the summer here. Even I'm not sure. I'm sure, right at the moment, it feels like I think the temperatures drop about 15, 20 degrees. It probably is 40, 45, somewhere in that vicinity. And it's a pretty good wind buffeting us. Uh, and it does feel like on top of the world at this point. Ready. Do you want this pull out? <laughs> I think we could pass this one, Ray. Just asking, don't want you to miss them. No. I'll redo it for a bit. You can see the uh, there's a uh, red fences there around the rocks. This little lift there. There's kind of a little ski area here. It doesn't don't see anybody out there right now. But it looks a little bit raw and a little steep. I think we'll pass. We're up here, so I thought we should we should look at this here. It's we're definitely um, getting more into uh, roads just open type situation here. I'm not even sure it is open. Ray doesn't know if we can get through here. I guess we didn't ask if it was open all the way through. But um, here's that little ski lift. I guess we're coming up on it now. There's a car from the other way. That's a good sign. I would say that's a very good sign. So, uh, I haven't seen anybody with skis though up since for the last hour or two. Maybe there's some big storms coming through or something. I don't know. It's the inter Summer at International Ski Race Camp. Uh, okay. Great. There's an outhouse and, and a generator for the for the lift. I'm sure that's what that was. So it looks like we finally really did reach the top here, I think. And we'll be scooting down a bit. At 100 miles an hour. 110. 120. Uh, and that looks like a winter scape more than a summer scape out there. It looks more snowy than. Mm -hmm. And with this rain and fog up here. Just saw a bunch of marmots scatter off the road. Ray was just saying this is kind of nice. This is the kind of stuff that you normally have to hike up to to get to. And here we're just able to drive through this stuff and don't have to do all the effort of getting up here. Do you want so. this pull out? Oh sure, that looks like a pretty good one perhaps. Off the edge of the world there. Here is here. Well, I'm going to retreat. 
they got a long ways to go down there, as you can see. And they're only up at the top there, and they're looking a little bit beat, perhaps. That guy's just sitting there. That guy's just standing there. I think they might be just a little overwhelmed by the whole thing. It's probably not the best of conditions. You can see a bunch of old shoosh marks. Apparently it keeps on going over. Now it's snowing a little bit, so and we're still kind of winding around up there at high altitude, so our driver has gotten just a little bit nervous about the whole thing. That thing Look there. Look at this, whoa! It's one of the bigger ones. We, uh, it's also gotten kind of misty, foggy with this snow type rain type thing that's going on. So, uh, it really kind of makes it feel a little more extreme. The good thing is the road at least is in good shape, or has been in good shape all along. It's narrow. It's narrow. It's pretty socked in up there. pull over in the wayside rest and crawl in the back and stay the night through the snowstorm. Hey, you know I brought some of those um, heater things? Yeah. Those I think you're going to use them, huh? Can you see the snow now? Look, it's drifting across the road. Bear's tooth pass we were looking for? It's winter. It's winter. That whole valley down there is filled with snow. It, it, it looks like winter. Of course, the peaks here, of course, have plenty of snow on them, too. There's that valley. It's not just one little peak that's snowed in. It's, it's everything. everything, yeah. So, this is your winter wonderland all, all months of the year, more or less. Yes. This is these, uh, uh, this area down below is a little lake called Frozen Lake that we just passed. And uh, of course it is, as we mentioned earlier, June 19th. And uh, it's a pretty uh, cool place. Frozen lake, which is still mostly frozen. Yeah. Landscape in general is definitely mostly frozen still. 
find your grizzly? Yeah, this is grizzly country. We just saw a sign. Now, campground, the first one was right in there somewhere. You couldn't get past the snowdrift to, to even get to the gate, which was open. But I guess we're not going to camp in there for tonight. Well, there's the Matterhorn. We've made it here to uh, uh, whatever country that is that we're in. And uh, Ray says she's going to climb that tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to do that. It sure looks like the Matterhorn, doesn't it? Like triangular peak. Mm -hmm.